Chicago. And prior to Chicago, I was uh, in Indiana for about 10 years, over 10 years. So a lot of these images are actually from Indiana. And uh, you know, these are sort of a hodgepodge of prints uh, that I just threw together um, before my move. So there, you know, I have I have boxes of prints sitting at home. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through each individual print. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully they're, they're self-explanatory. But I um, thought I'd share some, some my inspiration, some what really informs my work uh, photographically. Um, a couple of people mentioned earlier today that um, they're inspired or, or there's a relationship with the, the photographic work with, with music. And that's very much the case for me. Uh, the other big part of my life is, is, is making music, and, and I love listening to music. And what, what I try to do uh, with my work is, is to sort of <coughs> replicate or, or uh, visualize some of the <coughs> the rhythms and, and the emotion, as well as the sort of structure of music that I have to be careful. Um, for example, uh, Bach Fugue is, is just, for me, is, is the penultimate um, of music. And it speaks to me on a very deep personal level. So when I, when I look for, for images and, and I work them up, I try to sort of um, parallel that kind of uh, very formal construction, but also um, sort of a, a depth of, of information and, and feeling in, in the image. So um, in a lot of my images, I try to sort of uh, include layers, layers of detail, as well as layers of, of texture and tone. Um, and, but at, at the same time, I also love um, impressionistic music, like Debussy, where there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, color. And you know, kind of, uh, ironically, I, I print mostly in black and white. But even even within within uh, black and white, there's, there's a bit of opportunity to introduce color and, and build that into the relationships with tones and forms. Um, so uh, I do a lot of like, experimenting with tone in my prints. All of these are uh, traditional silver gelatin prints, but I do uh, introduce tone to my prints. Um, so I, I would just welcome any 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 thoughts or questions at this point. I, I don't want to spend too much time going through individual prints. So Dan, I didn't hear, are you using a square format? For a lot of these images, they are square format, but some of them are four by five. Because I, I think you have a, a gift for the square format, and there's not a lot yeah. of people that, that, that have that. I, I'm kind of uh, agnostic to actual print format. I, uh, I don't mind cropping aggressively when the image calls for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not fixed to a particular uh, dimension. So, so if, if a square negative uh, image works better in the cropped in a rectangular, I'll, I'll print that way. Beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. images. Mm -hmm. So do you primarily listen to classical music? Yes, I do. Okay. I also play music. Okay. What, what do you play? Uh, violin and piano. Oh, oh okay. what? There's a quiet poetry to this. Very mm -hmm. subtle and beautiful, sublime. <laughs> um, very beautiful. Thank you. I, I have to call, I know you may not want to talk about any of them specifically, but I have to call attention to the third one because to me that's, that's really breathtaking. Oh, uh, thank you. The, the, the subtlety, the the moodiness, the 
I mean, it has a very limited range, and yet it speaks so loudly to me. Thank you. I mean, that's that's one of my favorite prints mm -hmm. because uh, it's. Uh, it was taken in an area that um, close to where I lived in Indiana, uh, where I could walk um, at all times of the year. You know, just venture through this area on you know a weekly basis. So I became very, very familiar with uh, with the area. It's, it's called Eagle Creek, mm -hmm. and so I have I have many, many photos from it. <coughs> and one of the advantages of having <coughs> such a beautiful place close by is, is is you can you can look at it in different lights, different seasons. Um, in this in this particular case, um, it was um, there's a creek running through town, and there was an oil spill, and the oil had seeped into the creek, and and sort of polluted the, the water. But it also created this opalescent sheen of the water, and that's what caught my eye. Mm -hmm. That's uh, sort of reflecting the, the oil on the surface of the water. It seems very dead to see. Yeah. There you go. That's what I thought of me. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how that third out. one, mm -hmm. for me, it works. Pretty much equally, sitting back in my chair, we're getting in close, whereas number six is, it's intriguing enough, and then I get, as I get close, it really keeps drawing me in, and then it's, it's like a mystery, and, and it's, it's almost a, I don't want to, want to quite use the word sinister, but there's something darkly mysterious about that when you get close and suddenly see all the sinuous lines and detail, and uh, uh, it feels like I'm almost going to be falling to the print. Yeah, that's um, that's a very extensively uh, manipulated print mm -hmm. in the darker. Yeah, um, it's actually upside down. Okay, um, but that's that's right. part of the fun of, of working in the dark room. Um, just taking taking uh, a literal negative and seeing how to interpret. You have license. You've yeah. earned your license, and you can. And this one. Boy, it works back here, a little more impressionistic, and then getting closer, seeing that texture. And, the, and you mentioned that it had rained or something, or little, little tiny pop marks. And, mm -hmm. and I think it, it changes my, now I come back, but I, I know what I've seen up close, so it's changed my relationship with it forever, I mean, after, after having been that, that close. But, uh, Um, would you consider yourself a printmaker or a photographer? Uh, they're, they're two of a piece. They're two for you? Okay. Um, you know, that, your comment about, about you know, looking at things closely and, and from a distance, that, that's something that's also very appealing to me, that, that I try to um, consciously uh, create in, in the print. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a description in in the field of psychiatry. Actually, it's it's more about perception that, that each individual has has their own way of, of perceiving a scene. And and one anecdote is that uh, individuals with uh, cognitive psychiatric disorders they see you know the same image in a very different way. You know. If, if you if you ask a, a schizophrenic patient to to describe a scene, um, <coughs> uh, a normal I mean an average person would, would be able to point out all the elements. Whereas a schiz schizophrenic person might say, you know, that they'll focus on one very small detail of a scene. You know, they'll just they'll they'll, they'll describe it in, in in fantastic detail. But you know they'll have that kind of laser focus and. and that's what I would like to do. I mean, per perhaps I'm on the, on the spectrum, but <laughs> you know, well, no, this, this, I think this, in a way, I think photography does this to us. It it kind of gets us into that spectrum a little bit, and yeah. I feel thankful for that actually. I mean, Absolutely. You know, and to whatever extent it makes me a little crazy, and other, I could care less. I mean, I, I'm so thankful that and that you're bringing this to us. And that's a really insightful comment too, just about how. You know, it's there are worlds that you cannot necessarily 
explore from that level as a schizophrenic might, but there's some commonality there. There's some compelling, mm -hmm. you know, and there's there's great inspiration, yeah, right, with that that different sure. perspective and, and perception. Oliver Sacks. Yeah, I, I can't. I, sorry to repeat, saying something, but I can't. Given what you just said, can't help but uh, think about William Blake's line in Auguries of Innocence, where he talks about to see a world in a grain of sand, mm -hmm. and you know, I think. You you uh, you really bring that forth. Thank you. Yeah. So, so most of most of my images are are smaller in scale. They're, they're not of a grand landscape. They're, you know, my my attention is really drawn to uh, smaller details and the relationship. You have a beautiful eye. I'm curious, some people say when they take a picture, you know, they can see it, they know what it's going to look like. Are you one of those people? Or do you, once you take the picture and you get the negative, you look at it and you start seeing other things that you might not have seen, at least be conscious of, at yeah, that I, moment? I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's something that, that tickles in the back of my brain for me to stop right. and, and you know, decide to make an exposure. But uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm, I, I, have, I take the liberty to, to, to you know, break apart a negative and, and, and sort of reform it in, uh, post, post capture. So a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these images, for example, like, like that one, you know, I, I'll, I'll play around with it. And that's, for me, that's a lot of the fun. It was a lot of fun. Looking at these, that there isn't something originally that draws you to this in that little square that stays with you throughout. I mean, I, 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 I'm having trouble, there's dissonance there for me when, when I hear you say that, you know, you take, I, I think there, there is some sacrilege that you're, that's, that you're honoring in, you know, I mean, something sacrilegious that you don't want to. Um, I, I used to participate a lot in a, in a forum, an online forum um, called APUG. Yep. And more photography users. Yep. Yeah, I think it's it's more for 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 us. It's a different yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I started a thread a while back that you know I thought would be and also for the forum members, the participants. And that was was and then your final print. And and then have some description of of how you interpreted that, that straight print, I mean that straight negative. You know, either by cropping it or, or by inverting it, changing the tonal balances, um, and you know, that's that's all that's the creative process. It's this is none of these none of these are literal in any sense. So it's interesting you bring that point up because JB, when we first got together yesterday, he had said that about what he feels is about twenty five percent of the final images in the negative. The rest is in the dark room. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, at least it, when I when I adapt that formula to what I'm doing, I'm more in the a belief anyway of 40% is more in the negative because just the way I do things and how I can express When I see your work, 90% is the negative. 90% of what you're doing. Because obviously we, most of us in the black and white, we know what a black and white print looks like. And yours is just, nice. they're ethereal, they're, they're, they're real departures from yeah, um, the silver gel and print. It's, I think it's, it's a personal preference uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, and also subject matter. So n none of these, uh, I don't think many of these would be particularly interesting straight. For, let's say, an architectural or, or an urban landscape photographer, then you know, you're you're dealing with different subject material that calls for a different presentation. So this is just a, a very very much a personal preference in, in subject matter. I, I think you've interpreted this, right. at least for me, very inspirationally, and I, I my mind is like boggled after this <laughs> this day. <laughs> it, it, and it, that is the deal. That's that's my deal with with the process is. What you want in the negative is all of the information. Mm -hmm. If you have all the information there, 
whatever you can imagine, whatever you can technically do with it once you make the print. Mm -hmm. you, the, the sky's the limit. Absolutely. But it starts with that good negative. That's the reason I say 25-75%. Because if, if you've got that, if you've got the information, there's a lot you can do with it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think um, a lot of people starting out for, with photography, um, I think they, they, they have a, a fear of, of deviating too far from the literal. Uh, so, so, you know, the, one of the, the tricks that I've learned in, in, in learning to practice is to you know, go way, way beyond what's, what's, you know, what's literal or what's... Well, uh, the, the idea is to overdo it. Yeah, overdo you, it. You can take it to a point to where you, you destroy it because now you know how, how, far, how far you can't go. And then you can always back up a little bit. Yeah. It, it, that's, that's a really good way of, of working. Well and, and new photographers, again, the, I think the biggest thing that they have in printing is they don't make good negatives to begin with. You have to make good negatives. That's, if you get that information, then you do the rest of it in the dark room. Yeah. And um, the other aspect is, you got, uh, I feel perfectly comfortable throwing away information that's on negative. Always. Yeah. Just, if it's There's not important to the image. There's, there's no sin to, in cropping ever. Yeah. Some, sometimes your best your best friend is a road tramp. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no sin in letting something go. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. The calls yeah. For. I mean, you know, but like like you're saying, I mean, having all that information gives, gives, gives you more range of gives you more range that yeah. you can attenuate what you want. That's and, it. Uh, you, you take the parts yeah. you want. You throw away what you don't need. Absolutely. You mentioned visiting some of these places every week or regularly. Yeah. I think that gives a photographer a better sense of the place than you understand as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like music practice if you want to. Yeah, um, yeah. It and, and it's it's always different. Mm -hmm. So so um, you know, I I don't feel a, a huge pressure to go out traveling to exotic places mm -hmm. uh, because there's, there's there's always something right there. In your backyard. Well, to think that that third one in, which I mean, the third one in was my favorite until I got over here. And <laughs> and honestly, my my knees actually. I, I, I have to think you put that at the end for a reason. But anyway, just to know that that has some kind of an oil slick, you know, damaging of, of the environment, and to have it look that beautiful is. It's creativity at, at the uh, absolute heart. Well. Mm -hmm. Just so when, when I first saw it, I thought it was a you know a, a pictogram or something. You know, that's I couldn't even figure out what it was. That's what we we talked about when we first got <coughs> that. We had no idea what we we're looking. For. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I love screwing with people's. Just <laughs> 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 screw with people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm taking another look. Uh, maybe some other folks do too. I don't know, but they're really nice. Uh, thank you.